So I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when working with clients, they want me to take a video like this. And give it some fancy transitions to look like this. And for the longest time, easy to use transition packs have been a bit of a sticking point with DaVinci Resolve. However, with the release of version 16.2, we now have drag and drop transitions. Well, I was hit up by Eric from AFX telling me they have the most advanced transition pack for Resolve. Let's see if that's true. Folks, Nathan here. So today we're gonna to be reviewing the Power Transition Pack from AFX for DaVinci Resolve. As a note, this is not a sponsored video. They're not paying me or anything like that. They just sent me over a copy to review to see if I like it and I'd be willing to recommend it to anyone. And I will also say that transitions are very subjective. I'm not saying your videos have to happen to be great. Sometimes when overdone, it can actually look pretty darn cheesy, but it is great to have options and I'm really happy that we're kind of moving in that direction for DaVinci Resolve as the user base gets larger and larger, there's more options for people to use. So anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I'm gonna show today can be done in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. However, I am using the AFX Power Transitions Pack, which is available for sale on their website if you want. And after you get everything installed, you can just go into your video transitions down to fusion transitions and you can see them right here. And you can also see that I have all the JRTV force transitions, which I've used on this channel for quite a while now and there's quite a few of them. But if we look up at the AFX transitions, there's not nearly as many. So what's going on there? Well, check this out. So let's say we have this shot of this city up here and then we're gonna go into a shot of a car. So let's kind of zoom in. So what we can do, we can drag our zoom effect over here. And now if we play through, we should get a zoom, right? Start to play and it kind of works, but it doesn't really work. First off, when working with any transition pack in DaVinci Resolve, one of the best things to do is to set up your render cache. So check this out. I'm gonna go up here to playback and down to render cache. Now you can set it to smart or user. I'm gonna go with user so I can control exactly what it's going to render as a cache. And then gonna click on that and we don't see any difference. We have to go into our settings down here and on our master settings, go all the way down till you see optimize media and render cache. Now we want to automatically cache transitions in user mode and you just wanna click the checkbox there and then press save. And now we see this red bar appear above the transition. And as it starts to render, it's going to turn blue. Boom, just like that. Now, if you press play on the clip, it's rendered and it goes easy peasy. However, if you make any adjustments to it, it'll have to render again. So if we make it longer, we then need it to render again. Now the great thing is you actually have quite a lot of options. We can change the zoom speed. So right now we're at a quick zoom, but if we go into a slow zoom and then we play that through, check this out. So now it's a lot slower as it kind of zooms in. Doesn't really work for this particular shot, but it is kind of cool. So we have it zooming in right now, but if we want it to zoom out, we literally just click invert zoom right here. And now just wait for it to render again. And then you get something like this. Now, personally, I find this method very helpful when trying to manage your transitions. So you have one type that you can drag on and then you pick kind of the subtypes within that type of movement. So now you also have a bunch of settings that you can adjust to get the transition to look however you want it to look. And if we go in the middle here, we can increase our glow intensity and that'll make things more glowy and our distortion strength and maybe just play around with some stuff. So that's kind of cool, but let's go check out some of the more unique effects. So we're gonna go between these next two shots here of the guy at the wheel and the steering wheel itself. And let's go to the AFX camera move. We're then gonna drag that on and we have a bunch of different options. So we can click on it and you can see by default that we have the transition moving right. So let's see what that looks like. May look kind of familiar. <laughs> But again, you can go in and change it to all sorts of different directions. So let's say if we want it to go up, then we can do that and then just wait for it to cache. Let that go through. And now it's rendered. 
boom, and now it's moving up. And you can change it to all sorts of different directions, which again is great for management, but what if you wanna use it super fast? Well, here's something you can do. So we're gonna go to our next shot here. We have the steering wheel and then in a parking lot. Now let's say we wanna use our shape spin. We're gonna go in and drag that on top. Now by default, it does circles, but let's say we wanna go in and use a triangle, maybe invert our transition, and let's boost up the shape size a little bit and just play around with the angle. And just for fun, let's throw some blur on there. Okay, great. Now that the cache is ready, we're just gonna play it back and boom. So we get that funky kind of effect going on here. Now let's say we're doing a video where we wanna use that particular effect a whole bunch of times. Here's an easy way to set it up. We're going to click on our transition, right click and go down to create transition preset. And then you can name it whatever you want and then press okay. Now, as you see in our user transitions, we go down to triangle spin thing and there it is. Now we can also set this as our default transition by right clicking and then set as standard transition. So we're gonna zoom out on our timeline with Shift Z on our keyboard. We're then gonna select all the clips and press Alt T. And you can see that it's now applied transitions to all of the clips. So if we play through, you can see that it's using the triangle spin thing transition. Now I will note that setting up user transitions and adjusting your default transition is not at all specific to the AFX transition pack. It just makes it a little bit easier to use with some of the features that are built into DaVinci Resolve. As far as my experience with the pack goes, I've been using it for a few weeks now on the tutorials on this channel, and I gotta say, I'm really pleased with it. The customization options are pretty darn good, and I love the way that they've managed everything, keeping it simple and clean, and basing it all on the camera motion and letting you just play from there. I will note that in my color grading and bad displays video, I actually did notice a bit of a glitch using the laptop featured in the video. When using the zoom out transition, I did get this line that appeared right in the middle of the video. And it persisted after restarting Resolve multiple times and deleting the transition and starting over again. However, I only ran into that problem on that particular laptop. And when using it on my workstation here, everything's been fine. I reached out to Eric and after he tested it on multiple machines, we decided that it may actually be the Intel HD 620 20 integrated graphics within the laptop that is notoriously kind of buggy for Resolve. However, your mileage may vary, but I figured that was the only issue I encountered and I should be fully transparent and bring it up with you. Anyway, folks, I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about the AFX Power Transition Pack for Resolve. And I'll let you make up your own mind on whether or not it is the most advanced transition pack currently available for Resolve. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials a week, every Monday and Thursday. And let me know if you like the idea of me reviewing packs for DaVinci Resolve. I personally find that is one of the current weak points of Resolve. The ability to add flashy transitions with just a click of a button is definitely usually appealing to new users of the program. And maybe me shining a light on some of the options that are available that are super accessible for new users can help bring people on board so we can get more and more people using this fantastic program and making great art out there. Anyway, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.